In this lesson, we'll learn about position time graphs, slope, and touch on velocity time graphs. In the previous lesson, we looked at the difference between speed and velocity. When an object moves, the motion can be graphed and the graph can be analyzed. This will often tell us a little bit more about the speed, the velocity, the displacement, or the acceleration of an object. Here's a data generated when a boat travels at a constant velocity. Now, assuming that it has a running start and it goes by a certain marker at a certain speed, at zero time, as it crosses past the marker, it has gone zero distance. Uh, after five seconds, it will have gone 25 meters west, as the graph, uh, as the chart indicates. After 10 seconds, 50 meters. After 15 seconds, it's gone 75 meters. And uh, here's a position time graph of the boat's motion. We need a, an x and a y axis. On the x axis, we put time. Time is the, in this case, the manipulated variable. And uh, of course, on the y axis, we put the position. The position is the responding variable. And we can see that uh, after 5 seconds, uh, 25 meters, 10 seconds, 50, and so on. And when we connect all those uh, lines using a straight line, or all those dots using a straight line, we notice that the slope of the line is uniform. And that means uniform slope uh, will give us uniform velocity. Remember the y is equal to mx plus b. In this case, our m is a constant. Our slope is a constant. The slope of the position time graph gives you the speed, and uniform slope means uniform velocity. And if you knew what the direction was, then you could substitute displacement for distance instead of, uh, and, and in this case we do know since we know that the direction is west, it's not just uh, the, uh, the distance that we know, but we also know the displacement. So it's not just the speed that we'll know, but we'll also know the velocity. The method of finding the speed or velocity from a position time graph or a uh, displacement time graph is that we take the slope. Slope of a position time graph gives the speed. This is a very important uh, definition in physics uh, 20 and in physics 30 and beyond. The slope of a line is found using two ordered pairs, taken from the graph, not from the data table, but from the graph, and using the slope formula to calculate the rise over the run. So I picked two points here. Uh, at 12 seconds, it was at about 60. And at 4 seconds, it was at about 20. And of course, uh, to take the slope, all right, these are the two ordered pairs. To take the slope, you uh, use the slope formula from math. And it's y2 minus y1. All right, the y2 in this case is 60. The x2 is 20. Or sorry, the y1 is 20. And the x2 is 12. And the x1 is 4, all right? Uh, ordered pairs are written x and y, as you can see from the formula. So my m value, or slope, is 40 meters, all right, 60 minus 20. It traveled 40 meters in what period of time? 8 seconds. And it seems to be traveling at a uniform speed. And so the speed is 5.0 meters per second. Since the slope is 5.0 meters per second, the speed is 5.0 meters per second. And we know that the boat was moving west, so the velocity is 5.0 meters per second west. Now in this example, the magnitude of the motion is the same as the, um, uh, the sorry, the magnitude of the uh, speed and velocity are the same, but the velocity must also include direction, which would be, in this case, 
we have to understand that the only time the magnitudes are going to be the same is when the object is moving in a straight line. As soon as we bend to the left or the right, then the speed will be greater than the velocity, all right? Because as we change direction, we lose a little bit of the magnitude of the velocity, all right? Uh, we'll discuss that a lot more in circular motion when the speed actually may not change at all, but the velocity is changing quite a bit. Now what we just looked at on the previous slide was a position time graph for a particular type of motion. The motion graph looks differently if we change the uh, components of the y or x axis. So in this particular case, here's a copy of the graph that we just looked at on the previous page, and we have position on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. If we were to change this to a velocity time graph where we put velocity on the y-axis and leave time on the x-axis, notice that the velocity time graph looks quite a bit different. The velocity was 5 meters per second when the boat went by the marker, and it stayed at a consistent 5.0 meters per second. Now the slope of the position time graph gave a velocity of 5 meters per second west and that 5 meters per second is constant because the slope of the position time graph is constant. Now notice here on the right hand side that the slope of a velocity time graph is zero. Now this is an important uh, revelation if you like the reason for this is that the velocity is not changing over time. It's a slope on the position time graph, and so there is no acceleration. It turns out that the slope of this velocity time graph actually gives you the acceleration. In this particular case, the slope of the velocity time graph is zero, and that makes sense because the acceleration of this object is zero. It's not accelerating it's moving at a constant velocity of 5.0. It doesn't speed up, it doesn't slow down. If it were to speed up or slow down, the shape of the velocity time graph would look different. So looking further into uh, velocity time graphs, we have the graph below, which is exactly the same as the one on the previous slide. Uh, we've already established that the slope of the graph gives you acceleration. However, if we look at the graph's area under the line, and that means between the red line and the x-axis, we can see that it gives the displacement. After five seconds, the shaded area under the graph, all right, or in other words, after five seconds, the area under the curve, which is of course rectangular in shape, uh, gives us five meters per second times five seconds is a displacement of 25 meters. And if we continue along that line for the next 10 seconds from 5 to 15, uh, the area under that curve is of course um, 5 meters per second times uh, the total area is 15 seconds, all right, from 0 up to 15 would be a total of 75 meters. And of course the area under the curve then of a velocity time graph is displacement. Now we call it a curve. A curve is really a mathematical meaning any line on a graph, whether it's a straight line or a curvy line. Uh, in this particular case, it is a straight line, but um, we still call it mathematically, we call it a curve. Um, and the uh, uh, when they say under the curve, they mean between the line itself and the x-axis. Now, you can actually have a negative displacement, and we may look at some of those uh, in examples a little bit later on. Uh, if you had, of course, a, a, a distance time graph, or sorry, if you had a speed time graph, then instead of getting the velocity, you would get the speed, or sorry, instead of getting the uh, distance, displacement, you would get the distance. All right, just like it says there. All right, so um, another important idea, of course, as we mentioned earlier, is that the 
of a velocity time graph gives you the acceleration. The graph below is a velocity time graph for an object that is accelerating uniformly. The velocity is increasing over time. All right? At the beginning of the uh, run, the velocity is zero. As you can see, at time zero, velocity is zero. Now at time five, the velocity is a little bit higher. It might be three or four. At 10 seconds, it might be six or eight. At 15 seconds, it might be closer to 12 or so. And so at any point along this graph, we can find the slope. The velocity is increasing over time. And notice that the slope of the line would give us a positive acceleration. Now, we haven't put the numbers down for this. But if you were to grab numbers from this graph, you could substitute them into this formula, and you would get the actual acceleration. I'm just showing you the, the, the units here. The units give you acceleration. Because you're dividing meters per second by seconds, that gives us a meter per second squared. And, and later on in this course, we'll define acceleration in, uh, in algebraic terms. But from the graph, you can see that you get the unit meter per second squared, which is the proper unit for acceleration. And it says, note that the units of acceleration from the graph are in meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. And as I said, we'll discuss that very soon in an, another lesson. Now, the displacement, remember, from the previous slide, the displacement is the area under the curve. So if, for example, we wanted to find the displacement after 10 seconds, we would have to find a triangle under the curve, or under the line, at that particular point 10 seconds. So at 10 seconds, we would draw a line straight up. Now notice the area under the curve in this case is not rectangular as it was when we had uniform velocity. Here, because we have acceleration, the slope is changing, or the slope is, uh, is greater than zero. And we end up with a triangular shape under the curve. So we need the formula for the area of a triangle, which is 1 half base times height, or 1 half AB. And 1 half, that doesn't have any units. But of course, the uh, time, the seconds, uh, if we call A time, and B velocity, seconds times meters per second, the seconds cancel, and we get meters. And uh, of course, in order to calculate the displacement, you would construct a triangle under the curve, and you would get meters, which would be good. Now, if we substituted numbers in there, then we would get the proper uh, mathematical answer to this particular problem. What is the displacement of this particular object after 10 seconds? And just a very important summary of uh, these findings. Uh, the slope of a position time graph gives you the velocity. All right? Or if you don't have direction, it will give you the speed. The slope of a velocity time graph gives you the acceleration. All right? And of course, the area under the curve of a velocity time graph is the displacement. Now, you will use these ideas quite a bit. I would say the first one, the slope of a position time graph, is certainly used the most. But the other two handy quite a bit. And I would say you really need to uh, practice this stuff. And you will be given some opportunities to do that.